Hi, Lazar. Hello. Hey, where are you calling from? I'm I'm currently in Belgrade, Serbia. Glad nice. That's not too far from Turkey, where I am. Yeah. <laughs> Almost neighbors. Almost neighbors, that's right. <laughs> and let's not get into politics, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I actually called I, you. To, I didn't think it that way. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Turkey, Serbia, you know. Our guys are whoo, and your guys are whoo, you know, you don't know what can happen. I, I, I kind of feel that they're like having like really friendly relationship. I, I, I don't know. Let's don't don't go into politics. <laughs> all right, let's not go there. <laughs> I called you to <laughs> chat about Amazon PPC actually, about all the Perfect. new interesting things that they've been adding. Uh, mm -hmm. My friend shared with me on WhatsApp uh, that there are video ads available now, and uh, he just showed me how he's ranking for the video ads on his keywords every time. And um, I was very curious about that. So, have in your agency, and you run PPC agency, right? So, yep, that's correct. And do you guys run the video ads yet, and how does it perform? Uh, yeah, we started doing it a couple of weeks ago for a couple of the accounts and ACUS is really, really good. Probably because mostly people are not still using it and there is no a uh, lot of competition there. So comparing to other ads that you have in your account, these ones performing way better, but at lower scale. So we need to have that in mind. It's not going to, to like triple the sales or something like that. It's probably going to increase to like I don't know, five to fifteen percent, but uh, ACUS is way way lower comparing to um, the rest of the account. So, how do they actually work? Do you target keywords? Is it like just the same as as your manual campaign, except you show them a video? Yeah, how does it work? more 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 or less, it's like that. Just you don't show up with your product listing and in in search results, you show up your video. The one tricky part is you need to have that video. So it's uh, first time creativity takes really big impact there. So you need to have really nice video. You need to uh, have something to um, make people watch it. Like to, from the start, you know, like for example, in, on YouTube, you have those videos, and like the first five seconds are really important to to stick with people, or they're going to click on skip ad. So that's something, <laughs> sorry, that you want to focus on um, Amazon as well. So you need to have some really nice creative something that is going to make people watch the video, and depending on that, uh, you can expect different conversion rates and different click to rate. Uh, well, not click to rate in this situation, more like um cpm like cost per per view or or that kind of stuff so um it's it's definitely working if your video is good if your keywords are really good so basically my suggestion suggestion for people to try it and test it is basically taking your converting keywords or keywords that you want to show up for and like play place them in those campaigns with some really good video there and Basically, that's it. So these video ads, do they only show up at the, like on the listings, like the search results at the bottom? Or is there somewhere else that they show up as well? Uh, well, to be honest, I'm not really sure with, for, for like all, all of the, the placements. I need to double check them because it's really new for us. So I can come up with an answer like in a couple of days when, when we see some results. Great. There because, are other things like, that are when new, When it comes right? to reports, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes to reports. Well, wh wh when it comes to reports, you cannot see like, for, for example, if you go to uh, sponsor product ads, you don't see like the placement and that kind of stuff for them. Okay. So are video ads the newest thing that happened with the PPC or is there uh, some other thing that is more new than that? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's the newest one. Before of that, we had attribution, which is a pretty new thing as well. Mm. That's something that a lot of people are exploring at the moment. Um, it's really cool that for the first time, people can see uh, the impact from um, external traffic on Amazon. Um, the difference is, like, you could have done it using analytics on, on the storefront and create, like, small part of UTM and add it to your URL and to track uh, 
all the traffic coming from, let's say, AdWords, or Google Ads, or uh, Facebook Ads, or so on. But this way is going to be like way more precise because you can track for keywords, you can track for everything, you can see conversions, you can, uh, it's way more in detail. Only negative part is like, obviously, Amazon is not willing to share their information. And um, if you would like to see uh, all of the sales and conversions on the platform that you're making ads on, it would mean that you would need to be able to place a tag or pixel on on Amazon website. And that's something that Amazon is not allowing anybody to, to have because other platforms would be able to track uh, um, all of the conversions and all of the metrics from Amazon. And Amazon is obviously not allowing that. So basically it looks like that you need to have like two um, websites open. So you need to check your attribution on Amazon and at the same time you need to check your uh, other platform where you're checking ads so um, still it's a bit complicated but it's way way more advanced than ever before so for the first time you can be absolutely sure what's working and what's not working on Facebook or or AdWords or basically any other platform you can use it wherever you wish people often neglect Bing for example and Bing is really easy to set up uh, because uh, Bing has a really cool feature. You can link it to your um, Google Ads account and you can literally export your um, Google Ads account into Bing in literally one click and just review your ads and just review your campaigns and you're good to go. So attribution is actually sort of like this pixel that fires to say Facebook that it converted, right? Is that it? Or is uh, it well, it's, it's what is an attribution in basic terms? Uh, in basic terms, it's um, something that allows you to see what the traffic from other platforms is doing on, on Amazon. So if you're uh, spending money on platforms like Facebook, for example, you're going to be able to see if you're making any sales. Or for example, if you're doing many chat sequences, you're going to be able to track if you're uh, making any sales through them like to be absolutely sure so that's because generally that, showing you analytics right it's not for one click that i send them it's tracking that particular click converted or not it's, it's not tra like it's tracking everything it it's is tracking literally everything for for those platforms that, that that's the good part so you're going to be able for each campaign separately for each ad group separately everything separately you're going to be able to uh, double check what's going on there if you made any sales and so on because uh, in the past you would be able to see for example if you're on Facebook you create a campaign in that campaign you create a different um, results and, and you have your banners there and so on and you you can see um, CTR you can see um, CPC and and the amount of clicks and that's it you're not able to see how many conversions you made and now you're going you're able to log into attribution interface and in that interface you're able to see how many clicks and how many uh, conversions were made through campaigns on Facebook like for each one separately Oh, great. So it's not really a pixel that fires back to Facebook, but it's more like you mm -hmm. log into Amazon site and you check manually, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the yeah. tricky part. You're not allowed to. Uh, uh, Amazon is not allowing other people to to place pixel on on their website, and basically, you need to check both platforms at the same time. Okay. You know, you in the old times, how I was because I used to run Facebook ads and mm -hmm. to know if they're converting or not, because you never know. Right. So I was using the Amazon affiliates link, you know, when like they would usually, if you're Amazon affiliate and you have a blog and you promote random listings, you use this Amazon affiliate link and then it shows you how many sales you got, you know, that affiliate link. So on my own products, I would get an extra 5%. I don't know if I was against terms of service or not it was in the gray area right so yeah, it was somewhere in between depending in between because you you're promoting your own products with amazon affiliate there is no defined rules anywhere in terms of service but it's like when it's not yeah, defined it, it, it could it, be it, gray it, yeah and if, if you if you call customer support like if you did three times in a row you're probably going to get like different answers three different time. answers <laughs> that's right so yeah i was using that it was helpful but again it was two different platforms and tracking i'm so happy that actually 
Amazon has come up with something like this. So yeah, that's really, really great. Still not the best option. It would be best if you can place, for example, Facebook pixel on Amazon, but I'm pretty sure that that's not going to happen un, 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 unless Amazon buys Facebook or something like that. That's interesting. You know, so are you using uh, attribution uh, campaigns on, in your agency for your customers at the moment? Yes. So, Not for all of them. It's it's available in in US at the moment. So uh, some of the clients that that like to to expand their uh, traffic and visibility to increase basically everything, uh, they they start with with AdWords. They do a bit of Facebook as well. So we help them with some of it. We don't just create URLs for them. We we manage those ads as well. Okay. So does it mean that any other traffic source? could be that it could be facebook google ads it's not defined right what source you can yep. send from? well we we even tried it uh, um with with uh blog posts and link links there and like with um paid texts on on um in in news websites and so on and it's working there as well from there as well hmm, so it's available for every seller in the, in the advertising section is it uh, the thing is, they need to apply for attribution, and after that, they're going to get it. Basically, it's absolutely free, so okay. they can use it. So, how how do you apply for that in Seller Central? Oh, that's that's something that you should ask sellers. I'm not really sure about that part. Oh, that's right. You're not a seller on Amazon, right? You're yeah, I, I can. I can. No conflict of interest, that. I guess, for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait. But also, it's like really tricky to, when you set up, for example, uh, Google Ads for that. Uh, that there's something that that people need to know, uh, to take care of. Like when you create ads of that kind of, when you do targeting from from Google and to send traffic to uh, to Amazon, uh, if you don't add like broad modifier keyword for Amazon, for example, you're going to end up like spending a lot of money. For example, if mm. you're uh, selling plastic bottle and you didn't place like plus Amazon uh, as a broad modifier, you're going to show up for any search query on, on, on Google and you're going to compete against other websites. So I recommend everybody to start like um, a bit more conservative by, add, um, by creating broad modifier keywords and adding plus Amazon just to make sure that people that are searching searching on Google for certain product, they're searching for it on Amazon, basically. Okay. I'm trying to sort of quickly look into my account and see if there's any link that I can apply for. And I did find something, but it says like manage sponsored products. Hmm. You know where there is a list of services that you can apply for, but it looks like I have just yeah it's pretty hard so i'll have to google that up how to actually apply for attribution because i think it's such a cool cool option to have right i wish it it's would be great just one. available like right away so i wouldn't need to figure it out okay so there's another one that i wanted to ask you about is the retargeting um so retargeting as well is not available for everyone right uh, yeah, it's it's available for some sellers, but like Amazon is rolling out a whole bunch of new features at the moment. They're making it more and more complicated and they're adding new features. Like, for example, now you're able to see history on some accounts, which is really, really great. So at the beginning, you were able to see history only if you change stuff in the interface. But if you use some external tools or if you use bulk files, you wouldn't be able to see it in campaigns. So it's kind of tricky when you're in an agency and when uh, when customer comes and like checks um, the history in the account, he's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, I, I didn't see anything in the history for like a month here. And you're like, but I did it through bulk files. And they change it uh, so you can see bulk files, but for some of them. And it's like really messy at the moment. And when it comes to uh, remarketing, it's something like that as well you have an option to create it you have an option to place your product there but you cannot really play around only thing that you can change there is bid and basically that's it you cannot uh, 
uh, target in the same manner, for example, th that you do on, on Google Ads, where you are able to target specific websites or to um, not to show on certain websites and so on. When it comes to Amazon, um, display retargeting and uh, only thing that you can do is literally create campaign, add product, place bid, and that's it, click create and, and, mm -hmm. and do bidding optimization over time. And I'm pretty sure that's going to improve over time. And um, with DSP that, that Amazon is, is having at the moment, I, I feel like the DSP is going to be a part of Amazon interface in, in the future, in not probably in the near future, but maybe in a year or so, they're going to add more feature features because DSP is way, way, way more complicated than any uh, other campaign in, in Amazon at the moment. And like guys that are using self-service uh, self DSP uh, can see a whole bunch of different stuff, more or less stuff like that you can see in uh, brand analytics, which is like way more complicated than just a search term report. And, and yeah, basically they're making it more complicated because there's a need for it. Uh, one of the things Sorry for jumping from one topic to another because was a great I, 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 I like talking about PPC and I can talk for ages about it. So uh, they're making it more complicated because like other platforms, for example, Google Ads, they already did it a couple of years ago and maybe a year and a half ago, they, they started like simplifying it because they made it over complicated. So uh, what, what I'm pretty sure that we are going to have in the future when it comes to Amazon advertising, we're going to be able to target specific states, for example, in the US, or maybe to, um, to have different demographic targeting and that kind of stuff. Uh, one of the things that we are able to see at the moment, and it's really connected to attribution, is that we are able to see only last click conversion on Amazon at, at this point. And there's a whole bunch of stuff going on uh, when it comes to traffic and uh, buying funnel and, and, and research funnel um, before that last click conversion. So a lot of people tell you like, oh, I'm running he headline search ads or I'm running a whole bunch of different stuff um, and they're not converting. But maybe they're just one part of the buying funnel. For example, people in search on their phone for, for a product, the first thing that they see is basically sponsored brand ads or headline search ads, depending who, who likes to call, call them in an old way or a new one. So they search for a product, they see that way, and they're like, okay, I'm going to buy it from my desktop computer or my laptop because I feel like it's easier for me. But like trend is showing that more and more people are buying from from their mobile phones and that, that percentage is really, really big comparing to um, laptops as well. It's it's way higher than that. I know this so attribution is like a big problem in my business too. Like, uh, for example, who comes to Shopkeeper and converts? It's, you can't say it's the last click, right? Maybe he saw my video on Facebook, then he saw a video on LinkedIn. So it's sort of you warming him up and then eventually he clicked on some affiliates link and converted. I can't say that this was the actual reason he converted, right? It's, it's hard with the attribution thing. And Google, Google Analytics has a little bit of things that it can show you a little bit of attribution. So it's very interesting that it would come to Amazon and Amazon sellers would be able to also see you know, where that lead is coming from. If Especially if you have a Shopify site and some presence off of Amazon, then to see the whole picture is much more valuable, I guess. Yeah, that's really, really exciting thing that is happening on Amazon and that's going to improve a lot of stuff, especially because Amazon likes when um, sellers are bringing more traffic and bringing more customers to Amazon. But something that we realized recently, um, not all traffic is a really good one because people uh, can damage their listing by uh, basically adding bad traffic to it. Hmm, uh, if, what do you if, mean? For example, one of the things that happened recently, um, one of the clients started creating many chat sequences on his own and he made a lot of them, like a whole new level of a lot of them. <laughs> okay. and, and he managed to de-index for like 500 keywords because he he sent like really bad traffic to 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 his product listing and and we we were literally like what's going on in the account like we didn't screw up anything 
like everything is good from our side, but overall sales are really bad. And we started searching for the product and we couldn't find it on Amazon. And we were like, how the hell is this happening? And, and we asked him like, what's the problem? And he was like, well, may, maybe, maybe I've sent something that I should. <laughs> like, I'm like, please don't do it in the future. Oh. Like we, we need like two months to recover from this now. So that, that's something that, that is like really important to know. Uh, I, I mentioned that I think to, to Danny a couple of days ago. So it's really, really important like for PPC um, as well. That, that's a really important part uh, that you can hurt your product listing if you're doing PPC in a bad, bad way. If your uh, CTR is low and your conversion rate is low comparing to the average uh, in that niche. So if you're uh, bringing traffic that is having lower CTR or lower conversion rate, basically you're damaging uh, your product and you're just speeding it up with PPC. So it's really important to test your organic ranking for certain keyword while you're doing PPC. And if, it's, if everything is good, if you're doing it above the average uh, in the niche, you're going to, do, to make a huge progress for, for your product. You can see that, especially if you're doing like push campaigns and that kind of stuff where you take like a couple of keywords that you want to improve ranking for, then you create specific campaigns in exact form and you place high bids there and you want to push and you're like, okay, I'm going to spend a bit more money for this because in the long term it's going to pay off. Um, you're going to end up basically hurting your product. Um, if, if you see that, that all the metrics are improving and your BSR is going in the right direction, just continue doing it. But if you see that everything is like moving in a negative way, just slow it down or stop it because you're hurting it. And like somebody asked me like how far you can go there and like how much you can hurt it. it. And I literally told them like, it depends how stubborn you are. Like if you want <laughs> to spend like thousands, you're going to hurt it a lot. Okay. It's interesting that you said to that customer who was running the money chat, you know, uh, with the bad traffic. And then you said that it would take us two months to recover. So I'm curious now if I did something, you know, shitty like this uh, for my own uh, PPC and my own listing situation. So what should I do to recover it? Like, is it just you normally run it cleanly as usual or do you do something else in those two months? Well, uh... I, I don't want to give any recommendations when it comes to organic part because I'm not an expert in, a, in that field and I would like focus on PPC only here. So when it comes to PPC, every time like when you create campaign, it's not going to work perfectly from the start and from the scratch. You need some, some traction. Amazon needs to learn about your product and needs to know if you're um, showing for the right keywords, if your CTR is good and if your conversion rate is good. So probably after, I don't know, it, it, it basically never said anywhere about that. There is no quality score, but there is a quality score. Like you cannot mm -hmm. see it, but there, there, there's a way how algorithm decides when, when you're going to show up and how much you're going to spend. It's not only about auction and that kind of stuff. So depending on that learning process and that learning period, you need a couple of weeks, maybe three, four, five weeks before the campaign starts working properly and like when it starts working properly it needs a bit of time to like generate sales and to generate everything so you show up like in the, in the way you want it to show up that's why i said like around two months Hmm, interesting. You know, we've talked about all these trendy things, the attribution, the retargeting, but normally the things that work are the fundamentals, right? And I, I usually jump to trends a lot and I am a jumpy person who really likes, you know, shiny object things. And I just like, oh, TikTok, oh, attribution, you know. So can you tell me, like, you've been a long time agency right now so you've developed a feeling what works for fundamentals like what are the simple basic things like not going into detail too much like what are the most important basic things that i should do for my ppc campaign in order to succeed like what are the tactics and things that you use well at some basic level what is important is to check at which position your product is is performing the best when it comes to ads to check your search term reports and to check your reports regularly and when you do that never take only one time frame check different time frames because that's really really important because like for example you see that something didn't work for the last seven days 
uh, but it worked really well in the past. You cannot see it if you check only seven days. So you want to check different time frames all the time. And, and maybe at some bigger picture it's going to work better. So don't play with bits like every five seconds because it's not going to help anything. Uh, also have in mind that um, you have 72 hour discrepancy on Amazon especially when it comes to PPC. So if you're checking your sales for today on PPC, they're not going to show up or you're just going to see a small percentage. So what I recommend is wait for three or four days before you start checking that specific day. And when you're checking reports, never take like those three or four days, like three days, the last three days, take a time frame that, that is before of that because you're not going to get the right information there. So now, what do you mean by comparing different periods? So I don't just look at last seven days, I just look at last 60 days as a one piece, right? Or do I just take separate measurements of last seven days comparing to last 30 days? Like which period specifically you you compare when you look at customer accounts? Well, what we compare is seven days, two weeks, one month and 60 days. That's something that we frequently do. Um, because... Well, if you check only 60 days, you have seasonality, you have like some days that are peaks like Black Friday and, and Cyber Monday that are that are coming in a couple of days. So you can expect like some different stuff happening for 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 your campaign there. So it's important to check different time frames just because of that. Okay. So And you, you may be played with bits as well and other stuff. There is like a whole bunch of different factors that 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 you need to check. And like what is important, I see a lot of people not adding negative keywords and you want to add negative keywords if they're irrelevant. Even if they're relevant um and they're not making sales, place them as, as negatives in that campaign and create separate campaign like uh relevant not converting keywords or name it as 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 you wish. And like treat them differently comparing to your current com- keywords in, in your current campaign because um, you, you, you would think that some keywords are not working really well uh, if they're in phrase and broad in your current campaign just because some of the search terms are high spenders and non-performers performers there. And if they're relevant, just take them out and play, play with them differently. That's a very interesting suggestion, you know. Uh, usually, yes, I did have high volume keywords that were sort of more generic than my real keyword. And they were driving a lot of volume, but it was not converting. It was converting, but not like at a rate that I want. So it's interesting that you're saying to not kill those, to actually move them to another campaign. So what's that different treatment that you'll give them? Like, what do you do differently there? Uh, well, basically there you place uh, lower bids for them. You, you you cannot do like a whole bunch of stuff. You you basically negate uh, those keywords in all other campaigns. And in this new campaign, you, you basically place lower bid comparing to um, average CPC that you had in, in, in search term report. That That's basically the main difference there. Okay. Uh, what about the campaigns, the manual uh, keyword campaigns? How many keywords on average do you have in one ad group? Uh, I don't have a lot. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of having one keyword per, per ad group. I, I don't feel that it's the right approach to it. Uh, what we do is basically having 20 to 30 keywords in uh, one ad group and they're all um, in the same match type. And that's really, really important thing because uh, when you have exact phrase in broad in the same ad group, you're not going to be able to negate exact form of the keyword there because you're going to kill it Um, and also when you have them uh, all in one ad group you're not able to play around with bits but if you have like phrase and road in different ad groups comparing to exact form you can place really high bid on exact form because you want to rank for example for that keyword and you can negate it in phrase and broad and you can place whichever bid you wish for for phrase and broad, and there you're going to use those keywords for keyword harvesting and to, to expand your account further. Basically, it's going to be super helpful for the account. Hmm. What about negating keywords? When do you decide to negate it? Like how many clicks or conversions do you wait for? Is there a formula to this? Well, it really depends on profitability and how how far you're willing to go with spend. 
it really depends if you're selling like random stuff like headphones for example and so on um if it depends on your margins and also if your product is um, in some kind of subscription plan for example if you're selling supplements everybody is talking about supplements because it's a living hell to advertise there and to sell supplement because of yeah um it, it's it's a tricky niche the thing is like when it comes to supplements for example um somebody that bought your product the product is probably going to take subscription plan and buy and buy it for like next six months or next year so a lot of people are willing to sacrifice the spent of the value of one product or two products there um, to get like the rest of um, products sold and that, that that's a funny part like that's the only place where you where people are intentionally placing like acres at 100% for certain products because they know that they're going to make further sales in the future and they're going to be displayed as, as organic sales. Uh, so that's something that, that we need to have in mind with when, 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 we, when we check business reports. So it's quite expensive. So you let's say you are willing to lose one product, let's say $25 on each keyword mm -hmm. so now you just told me you run 30 keywords in one ad group so that's already 750 dollars to just test 30 keywords so how many keywords in total do you usually start with when you start like working with new product <coughs> sorry i'm pretty sure that uh, people have unlimited budget if everything is profitable so <laughs> that's true <laughs> so when it comes to that we usually um start a bit conservative create some basic manual campaigns that are going to be like top generic and like um keywords that, that are having high traffic medium or low traffic so we test everything at the beginning obviously when you start advertising you are probably going to uh, get really hard to those uh high traffic relevant keywords because a lot of competitors are um, there and what you want to do is basically target those competitors like async targeting um, so those guys are going to uh, get the traffic on their product listing and and basically they're helping you you have like a whole new web page where you can advertise and it's going to be cheaper if they didn't um create any defensive campaigns. So you need to double check like er, er, every now and then like what's going on in those campaigns. So if you don't see any uh, conversion and, and your CPC is super high, it means that probably that, that competitor, that product listing is targeted a lot by others and you can more or less check it. But if, if, you, if you see that, that your CPC is pretty low there, it's safe to say that you can start like advertising on it a bit heavier so you can start stealing sales from a guy that uh, drove traffic to his product listing mm, okay that's a lot of good tips you know uh so when you go Thank to you. other podcasts and and chat with sellers uh do you usually give out any like i don't know tricks of the trade any like dark deep secrets that no one knows could you share like one with us as well like something that is totally useful that you know you sometimes share and people appreciate well <laughs> I, I, this one wouldn't sound like super useful but trust me it is it is when somebody tells you that they have a perfect solution for like ppc or for something that helps him make like a whole bunch of money it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for you so don't stick it and like don't praise it like a lot you need to a b test all the time that's that's the main trick like um if somebody showed showed you their account and told you told you like oh this keyword is doing really good for me you can try it as well and you take it and you create a campaign with that keyword first for him he has way better traction than you because he has history for that keyword other thing is probably his keyword has way more reviews than you have um the other thing is like it's 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 like way different thing like way way different things so it's not going to work the same for you 
Uh, so don't trust everybody that tells you like that they have like perfect formula or perfect solution for everything. I know that this is something that you didn't want to hear from me, <laughs> but this is something that people usually do and like they trust like different courses that tell them like this is the thing that is going to help you. No, it's it's something that you should test. Like PPC is all about testing. You need to to test everything, and even though if something is working for you. You should test other stuff because the algorithm changes and nobody is coming to you and tells you like, ding, 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 we changed the algorithm and it's working like this now. Nobody tells you that. So you need to A-B test a whole bunch of new stuff and like a whole bunch of stuff are, are happening in a different way. Maybe uh, some competitor that was um, doing some negative stuff for you, like in a manner he was spending a lot of money for a certain keyword. Uh, maybe he bailed out. Maybe he's not working anymore. Maybe you should try your keyword once again and so on. So if, if you're absolutely sure that something is not working for you, maybe you should try it once again. Very interesting. And now the more options Amazon adds, the more things there is to try. So they are, I guess, taking our money this way, the, but the more things we have to try to pay for that data. <laughs> Yeah, but but also it's really really good because uh, when when you have a whole bunch of different stuff like that to try and test, it really comes to your knowledge because uh, when when you ask people that are on Amazon for for a long time for like five or ten years and they're like, oh, I remember whenever whenever I created campaign and placed like ten bucks, I would make a lot of money out of it. Like today is not like that anymore. Like you need to have a knowledge. To, to to make money on Amazon and whoever tells you like you should do it like for 30 minutes a day and you're going to become rich that's a lie this is a job and like it's a profession and you need to focus on a whole bunch of different things not only on PPC but overall when it comes to your product listing it's a business that you want to grow nice words to end with so Lazar if people want to connect with you and work with you how can they reach out to you uh, they can send me an email on office at sellersalley.com. They can reach out to our Facebook page. They can contact me uh, on Facebook and for you or <laughs> whatever works. Okay, let me check. Uh, so you're saying sellersalley.com. So let's just go to Google Chrome. Yep. There it is, right? Sellersalley.com. Yeah, All right. Yeah, we have, we have chat. We have email there. So they, they can they can contact us whichever way they wish. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you very much for coming to my show today. Thank you, Lazar. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me.